If you missed Jack Anderson Confidential, you missed hard-hitting, thought-provoking stories, like how Egyptian and U.S. officials stole millions from the Egyptian military aid program, asbestos poisoning at Johns Manville, the $6 billion Maverick missile boondoggle, problems in the Justice Department's witness protection program, and this week, an investigation into how improper health screenings of Southeast Asian refugees has spread disease in this country. Don't miss this week's Jack Anderson Confidential. An American family sentenced to non-existence, their only identity, three dots. Asbestos, an epidemic of asbestos lung cancer. Was there a corporate cover-up of the hazards? Have millions of dollars been stolen from the U.S. military assistance program to Egypt? For sure. Mossad Badra, a star witness in exposing the U.S. Egyptian military assistance program scandal, arrested last week, the day after he appeared on this program. A full report. These stories coming up next on Jack Anderson Confidential. Now from Washington, here is Jack Anderson. First news behind the headlines. Perhaps the most disturbing news this week was the jump in unemployment. But confidential forecasts contain even worse news for many workers who have lost their jobs. They had better develop new skills and look for other work because they may never get their jobs back. This will be true specifically of auto and steel workers. Let me read a chilling excerpt from one confidential forecast. There is little hope that workers from closed steel and auto plants in the Midwest will ever get their jobs back. There's also an untold story behind the firing of 15 people last summer from the Democratic National Committee. The reason given was lack of funds. But my sources tell me it was a purge of Senator Edward Kennedy's supporters. The committee's now tilted in favor of former Vice President Walter Mondale. The Pentagon lobbied hard to convince Congress to purchase a new cargo plane. Critics claim this was a $10 billion bailout of the manufacturer, the Lockheed Corporation. Now the General Accounting Office has accused the Pentagon of illegal lobbying. This man, Lloyd Mosman, participated in the strategy sessions where the lobbying was planned. In fact, he was the senior Air Force civilian president. Last week, the Pentagon nominated him to receive a $10,000 bonus. It's a reward, I'm quoting, for outstanding performance. When I return, a look at an American family sentenced to banishment by the Justice Department. If in all the world you could have only one source of news and information, what would you want it to be? Think about that for a second. Only one source of news and information, what would it be? If you say Time Magazine, you're not alone. More than 29 million people all over the world turn to Time's lively pages each week to catch up on what's new and what's news everywhere in every field. With writing so fresh and pictures so colorful, you enjoy every minute and start looking forward to the next issue. When? Time is back again with the latest books and movies. What's happening with sports, business, and people? And what may happen next? In all, Time gives you 30 exciting departments of news and ideas. And now, Time makes one of its biggest offers ever. 26 weeks of Time for less than 79 cents an issue. Over 45% off Time's cover price. Payable in three easy installments of six seventy-seven. So call toll-free 1-800-621-3024. Oh, by the way, with your paid subscription... We'll also send you Time's Desk Reference Library, the Webster Dictionary, Roger's Thesaurus, and the Signet Hammond World Atlas, free 
Call 1-800-621-3024. Get Time's Desk Reference Library free and a time for three easy installments of 677. Our operators are standing by. Remember, time is over 45% off and the reference library, all three books, is free. This is a story about an American family. It's a family without a name, without a past, and now without a future. They've been cast out of the place they called home, cut off from the people they once knew. They can never return. They don't dare telephone a loved one or even send for their hometown newspaper. They have no identification papers. Their fingerprints can't even be traced. They have no social security number. It's impossible now to find a job without a social security number or references. Well, I wish I could show you the parents' haunted faces, but I can show you only the baby whose face won't be recognized. All are identified by a code name, Three Dots. It's, uh, we just don't exist. As far as the government goes, if you were to call the Marshal Service or the Justice Department, you'd get an answer like, uh, we're precluded from answering that question. Or uh, we neither deny nor confirm that uh, Three Dots is in the uh, witness protection program. So who, who's to say if they find my body laying in a ditch or my wife and myself, uh, who's to say we ever existed? Why is the family in hiding? Well, the mafia wants to kill them. Mr. Three Dots helped the government convict nearly 20 mafioso of such crimes as racketeering, extortion, and murder. Now Mr. Three Dots has been marked for murder himself. My associate Indy Badmore found the family in abject poverty. They have no money, not even enough to buy the baby's formula. Mr. Three Dots went to Catholic charities for food and shelter. Here's the room where they now live. But most charities are also short of money. Catholic charities cannot afford to maintain the Three Dots family any longer. We just tried to provide some type of service until we could fully understand really what was going on so that we could sort of guide him or refer him to the places that he would need to go to some to either get the assistance that he need or to get the problem squared away so that he can either carry on with his life or get back in the mainstream of society. At one point we didn't have any place to stay. We didn't have any money in our pockets. We were told, I was told, that if I wanted a place to stay, I should go to the shelter for battered, battered wives and make up a lie about how my husband beat me. And when I asked where my husband would go, they told me that he, he could go to the YMCA. I explained to them that we wanted to stay together. And I was told, well, there's nothing we can do for you. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? And at that point, I, I just about broke. I don't know what I would have done at that point if help hadn't come along. We probably would have hitched back to our danger area. The danger area Mrs. Three Dots is referring to is the outside world. It could be almost anywhere. Doesn't the government protect witnesses who testify against organized crime? Yes. In recognition of Mr. Three Dots' valuable aid, the Justice Department put his family in the witness protection program. We were all settled. Uh, my husband had started a new life, a business. We had a house. Everything was going fine. Everything looked good for the future. And then one day, we got a telephone call. We were terminated from the program. Bob Kelly is a retired federal marshal with more than 20 years experience. The marshal service runs the witness protection program. Kelly now heads his own firm, which provides executive protection to VIPs. What do the marshals actually do for the witnesses that they're protecting? Well, for the most part, they uh, give them a new future, a uh, new identity, uh, relocate them in another area, um, 
provide total security for the principal and his uh, family. What would happen if the Marshal Service were to withdraw this protection from an individual? Would it place this witness in any kind of danger? I'd rather think it would. I'd rather think it would because it would be, he would be on his own. It would be up to him. And he might have uh, enough background to where he would make proper judgment at different times and maybe not. And it might make the difference between life or death. You know, it's just a matter of time till I die. It's, uh, it's just the waiting that's uh, the hard part. You know, sometimes a guy uh, is going to get killed, he's going to get the electric chair, he's going to be hung or gassed. He knows his date. I Me, mean, I don't know it. I don't know uh, what tomorrow brings. Uh, we've talked about giving up to children. You know, it's, um, Now, that's even uh, a thought that occurred to us, and that's uh, for their sake more so. The Justice Department arbitrarily dropped Mr. Three Dots from the Witness Protection Program. What was his offense? He was a pain in the neck. This was his reward for being a good citizen. It's understandable he became edgy. The Justice Department relocated the family in an area where he was unknown. But the government used a trucker who might know his identity. Mr. Three Dots became irritable. Then he wanted to set up his own business. He argued with the Justice Department over money. He wasn't paid to testify. This was resettlement money. Mr. Three Dots became cantankerous. In a fury, he contacted a local newspaper and blew his top. The article embarrassed the Justice Department, and government officials don't like to be embarrassed. They washed their hands of Mr. Three Dots. The government has pulled the plug on his life support system. Isn't that a high penalty for the government to impose because of a tantrum? That withdrawal of them leaves me totally, uh, I have no defense. What do I have to do? Carry a gun and uh, separate from my wife so she might live and uh, get away from my children because... Uh, uh, you can't, you can't explain in words. Just think to yourself, if you were put on a gallows and uh, you had a chance for a reprieve, see, everybody in the outside world can go to court and they can get a reprieve. But what about me? I sit here and uh, I know I'm dead at any time. I walk outside. I don't know if I made a mistake and they know where I'm at or I don't know if uh, even uh, the people using the cameras... Uh, who they know, who you speak to, or who they speak to. I can't... I live in a world of total uh, non-trust. Hello? Yeah? Hi, how you doing? How you doing, Maggie? Okay. This is the voice of Margaret Hutchinson, the Justice Department's top liaison with the Marshal Service. The people in the Justice Department, the Marshal Service, and the Witness Protection Program refused to be interviewed. So we recorded this conversation between Mr. Three Dots and Margaret Hutchinson. So you say there's no place I can have a hearing that, uh, that you know of? Uh, well, you've had it as far as I can tell, oh. right here in this office. I mean, you talked to Jerry Sher first? Well, I didn't see him. Well, that doesn't matter. I mean, he can, you can tell him the same thing over the phone, you can tell him face to face. Oh, no, you can't. No, you can't. Because pers people, people see a person's face, they know who's telling the truth, who is. And when the Marshal Service told you that uh, they were right, you believed them. I'm telling you I'm right, nobody wants to believe me. Senator Orrin Hatch is chairman of the Senate Labor and Human Resources Committee, which has been investigating organized crime. I took the Three Dots case to Hatch. Where does somebody like Three Dots turn to for help? He can probably come to us. He can probably come to the United States Senate, to the uh, Judiciary Committee, which is now controlled by people who would be sympathetic. What specifically can you do, or will you do? Well, I think we can hold hearings. I think we can put pressure on the FBI. I think we can put pressure on the Justice Department. I think we can do a lot of things. We can certainly demand that we know, uh, d demand to know just why they took him off that program, and they, they better have a